I wanted to go over chapter six, homework one, problem number four. I wanted to show you a couple of different ways to arrange your data that don't involve any hard coding. Uh, hard coding, um, hard coding is a problem, and and there's a reason why it's a problem. Uh, I don't know that this data I have anything set up to show you, but if there's any spaces uh, that that are in this data that uh, that you don't see but that Excel will see. Uh, then hard coding is going to say, okay, Sunday with a space behind it is going to be a difference, is going to be different than Sunday with no space behind it. So I, I want to find a way to, to construct this, this data into a table that involves no hard coding. So I'm going to highlight those days, and I'm just going to make a copy, and then I'm going to go to data, Remove duplicates. So there's my list of days. I'm going to do the same thing with the list of violations. By the way, while I'm in the process of copying this, almost everybody was was fine with the uh, how they separated out the data, but a couple of it, well, maybe just one hadn't seen that DUI and over speeding and stop sign violation were each unique violations, so we had to enter them uniquely. They weren't just a list that represented, you know, what happened that, well, they were a list of what happened that day, but they were not intended to be a single violation. So I'm going to create these violations. I'm going to re, I'm going to remove, well, let me try this again. I don't want those days in there. Not that it would matter, but. Let me remove duplicates. Okay. Now, I, I would like, uh, what would I like? I would like the days to be across the columns. And so I'm going to, I'm going to make that happen uh, in a way that maybe you've not seen before. I'm just going to copy. And then I'm going to copy what's called the transpose. And underneath the paste categories, you see this, there's these two arrows. See what it did is I put them in. It created those columns. Once I have those columns, I can delete these objects. Uh, transpose is kind of a strange function. It won't let me copy over top of things. Often there's a two-step process to get that transpose to work. Uh, so let's go to work. And what I want to do right now is get a count of all the DUIs that happened on Sunday. So I want to introduce a new function. You know about count if. I'm now using a count if it's with an S at the end. Sorry, I almost missed done it, did it. So let me let me go through and let me capture uh, this column of days and I'm gonna make it going to make it an absolute reference. So that's where the data is coming from. And then I'm going to say, well, I want you to refer and find that Sunday. Now I'm going to play with this. I'm pushing F4. There's an absolute reference, but it will always point to Sunday. I don't want that. If I do this one, uh, I will always stay in column one, but I can change the, excuse me, I will always stay in row one, but I can change the columns. That one's exactly what I want. All right, next one, I'm going to collect all the violations. Let me try that again. It didn't work as well as I had hoped. So let me gather that information. Again, I need an absolute reference. And then I need what the criteria. Well, I'm going to look at the DUI. Well, I want to look, I, I don't want to see, I've got an absolute reference. If I copy this, it'll always point to DUI. Well, I, I don't want that. Uh, this one will stay in uh, row two and not let column E vary, and I don't want that either. This one remain in column E, but let the rows vary, and that's exactly what I want, okay? So once I, once I what I've done, this count ifs function, takes my two arrays and these two conditions 
and it will go through that table and it will count every Sunday where a DUI occurred. So the number that I get says that there were two Sundays where there was a DUI. I set this up so that I can copy it and then let's do the interpretation. I'm going to press F2, make sure I'm still referring to the right places. So for example, this number in this cell is all of the Sundays where there was a stop sign violation. There were three of them. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing all the way through the table. Okay. Now this construction allows you to not have to use um, hard coding so you don't have to go through and count all the unique things uh, all by yourself. You can let Excel do it and it's much quicker. And then getting the totals, which we also need, is just as simple as summing across the columns. So there were eight DUIs over this month, 19 over and speeding, 15 stop violations, etc. All right, we could go directly to this table to uh, construct our Pareto chart. But I want to do something that some of you did that I thought was really cool. You went ahead and you said, let's construct a pivot chart from this. So pivot chart, and you said, okay, where am I going to put it? I'll put it in an existing worksheet, and okay. And then you said, Let's put the violations as the rows, and then let's put the totals as what I want that evaluated. Mm -hmm. Now here's my chart, but it is not a, a Pareto chart. A Pareto chart would have this over speeding over here, stop sign violations in the second spot, parking violations in the third spot, etc. So somehow you need a method for, for sorting this pivot table. And I noticed that nobody hit on it. Uh, let me show you that it's really, really easy. In fact, easier than any other sort you've done. All I've got to go do is go into one of the cells in this column where the numbers are, right click and sort. And it says sort largest to smallest. That's going to give me the Pareto chart. Now watch the chart and the table at the same time if you can. Notice that the table is going to be sorted uh, from largest number of violations to smallest, but the chart's going to resort itself as well. So here we go. See, now I have a Pareto chart. So you can use this count ifs function in conjunction with this uh, pivot chart and table to get to a conclusion. I, I just wanted to show you that because it's kind of a nice, a nice way to work with problems like problem four. Hope this is helpful.